Can I pet that doll? Can, I pet that doll? Can you pet the wolves? No, you cannot pet the wolves. They do not like that. <laughs> I'm Colossal's manager of animal husbandry, Paige McNichol, and I'm going to answer your questions about Colossal's de-extinct dire wolf. At the SK2023 asks, who takes care of them and how many dire wolves exist? We have an entire team that takes care of them that includes a veterinarian, vet techs, and keepers. There are three dire wolves at this point, Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi. At, oh, oh. At Bass Antilla Adadash 1340 writes, how do you differentiate between Romulus and Remus? They look the same. They do look very similar. Um, there's some subtle size differences. The biggest and easiest way for me beyond personality is right like at the base of their nose where their eyes meets and their snout kind of hits. Romulus is wider than Remus. Remus is a little taller and he's lanky. So he has like a more think of a runner or a swimmer kind of physique. And then Romulus is definitely broader and stockier. So you're going to think, you know, your football player. That's the biggest way. And then just how they interact with us is a huge cue for how they are different. Their personalities really shine through when we're around them. Romulus is a little bit, loves people, but more shy on the camera. Remus apparently loves the camera. He likes people, but he's uh, more interested in what's going on and making sure he has his eyes on everything. So Romulus is more like, hey, what are you doing? And Remus is like scanning around constantly to keep his eye on all things. All right. at. Tanjiro Kamado 89 asks, are they friendly? That is always a loaded question. <laughs> so friendly, what does that really mean? They're never in a situation where they could not be friendly to me. They want to interact with us. So in that sense, I think it's friendly as they want to come up. They know we're going to give them food. We're going to give them treats. Everything we do has been really positive. So they want to interact with us. Now, if I was in there, do I think that you know, and I tripped or was running around, they're going to be friendly like my dog. Nope, they are a wolf. If I was in there running around, they would injure me. They would think I was prey, all the instincts would come in and they would take me down and take me down quickly. Wolves are faster than humans. Uh, these guys are big and they have big skulls and big jaws and their mouths open really wide. And if they wanted to, they would easily hurt us even if it wasn't what they were attempting even if they were just like i was playing it would not work out well for me or anyone else at nick saucy writes how long will it take for them to become full grown these are the first three dire wolves so i really don't know because they are the only ones we have on the planet but for gray wolves where i base my knowledge on gray wolves can grow up to the age of three at three their skeletons will stop growing now, gray wolves and many other wolves grow really fast when they're pups to about six to nine months of age, depending on the individual and the species and their nutrition. And then they're kind of tall and then they'll kind of slow down on the height gaining and they start getting bulky. They're just so juicy. And then it's gonna be this like slow little like for weight, but in between weight, they're gonna be like slowly growing up. So they do a lot at first and then it's more like, okay, I have to bulk out and now I have to grow up a little bit and bulk out and grow up a little bit. So somewhat similar to like a teenager. At John MJ Covington asks, what are their favorite toys? Their favorite toys are sticks and horns. This is the joy of working with dire wolves. You can get them things. They're going to destroy them. So we get lots of toys very often. And then we watch those toys die. At the end of the day, they love Sticks, good old stick, bamboo stick, any type of wood stick is great. The more moss on it, the better. At Legend Official wants to know why dog kibble? An excellent question. It's an exotic canine kibble formulated for exotic canines, such as wolves. It is used in many zoological institutions and it just is formulated to have more of the vitamins and minerals added in because we don't want to take any chances. And so we could give them live prey, but the live prey we get is going to have been euthanized humanely in a manner to be fed out. And then it starts to lose nutrition after that. And we can add it in, but we wanna ensure that they are getting all of their vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And so this is kind of the approved diet based that most zoological settings feed their wolves and other canids. At Albion Wild asks, how much meat per week do they eat? 
Okay. I'll be in the wild wants me to do math. <laughs> um, uh, let me think this out here for a second. So I'm going to say right now it's between 75 and 100 pounds given the week, the day, if there was extra. I'm trying to include in all of their like training treats that would come. Obviously they're growing, so we're making sure they have as much food as they can handle and would like. Have Romulus and Remus started hunting yet? Yes. <laughs> they want small rodents. Not many things can get into their habitat, but small rodents can, and they will definitely hunt them. They will help themselves to the little moles, bulls, gophers, rabbits. If they can outrun it and catch it, it is theirs, and they will eat it. And where the spoils of their hunt all over their white, white fur, it's grand. <laughs> At LX Eagle asks, but why was Khaleesi raised apart from her brothers? Khaleesi was born after her brothers, so she was raised apart from them because they had a head start by, what, five months? So they were five months older, five months bigger. They were already weaned off of bottles. They were puppies playing, pups playing, and she was smaller. She was near her brothers as soon as she was big enough to, you know, be safely in the space that they were on the inside our facility. Her brothers could come in and see her and smell her from the time she was a month old. They just were too big. And so we managed to introduce them to where they knew the other was there and she could be around them and they could see her. But for her own safety, we had to protect her. So she had to be raised apart. And that is why the introductions are going ongoing and going slow because Romulus and Remus are very big and they've had five months to grow that she hasn't had. So she will catch up. As they start to slow down, she'll still be doing this massive growth spurts and then they will catch up and that will help equalize everything. At TT Kendall writes, what level of human contact do the dire wolves experience? So we interact with them. Most of it is through what we would call a protected contact, which means there is some type of barrier between us and them. Uh, for us, it's fencing. We have different types of fencing, different sizes of fencing, based on where they are in their giant habitat. So when they come into our building where we can get the weights on them, they are interacting with us and we can, you know, bring them over where we do kind of where we're going to, we're in the process of teaching them, you know, to lean in for some injections and to hold a pot out in a safe manner where we could draw blood if they allow us. It's a voluntary uh, blood draw for them. But it's not like contact, like I would sit with my dog on the couch you know laying on my lap we don't do any of that these are big animals they're dire wolves they have big teeth they're very strong and they in no way think that they are a dog and everyone that has interacted with them and sees them is very aware that it's not a dog like when you get in their presence you're like oh yeah that's not a dog that's a wolf at nathan stotts 1585 has to know, so when are they rideable? Never, unless you don't like your life and then feel free. And then I'll be grumpy because I'm going to have to clean up your carcass. I will not be good. No, you cannot ride them. No one can ride them. I don't think they would let you ride them. I was like, I do not think so. Even if you manage to ride one, I'm pretty sure the other one would just take you out. At Midnight Moon 197 writes, are they allowed to interact with other wolves? No, they are not allowed to interact with other wolves. We, they're doing their own thing in their own pack. The other wolves are doing their thing in their own pack and wolf packs don't usually like to hang out with one another. This isn't a big kumbaya thing where they all get down at the water hole and have like a party. They're usually like, dude, why are they over here? No, we've done the best we can, we've given them other different types of interactions. Um, to do that, we made very good decisions at the beginning so we could get some of those wolf-like behaviors and then we monitor, like we are always monitoring their behavior to make sure that what we did worked. Like we had Romulus and Remus, if it didn't work, we could change it for Khaleesi. So for Khaleesi goes on, as we go through, we will evolve and grow with our techniques and how we do this as well. At Daniel Pie 7738 writes, can they sniff out snow zombies 
Um, I know we named her Khaleesi, but I don't think White Walkers are coming. <gasps> now, for their noses, could they smell? Uh, they do have a really good sense of smell. Again, I don't know if they could sniff out snow zombies. I don't know that we'll give them opportunity to do that, but they do have a good sense of smell, just like you, any other wolf, so they rely on it a lot. They can smell things, they can smell changes, they can track where we've moved things. With smelling things, we provide different scents as an enrichment because they rely on their sense of smell a lot, and they can definitely focus on that. They also are very good at recognizing mm. anything that's new, and usually they smell it first. Obviously, they're using their sight. They can hear things, uh, and they can hear different changes in things, so they are very attuned to those senses, and they utilize them well, but snow zombies, don't know. At Andrew Tickle asks, if dire wolves wore pants, would they wear them vertically or just on their back legs or horizontally on all four legs? Huh? Okay. On just their back legs or horizontally. I don't think they would wear pants. I don't, I think they're too proud and they're beautiful and they would not wear pants. They just want to show off their white, fluffy, luxurious fur and they don't wear pants at all, regardless of any of the ways and any other ways that anyone thinks about. No pants. That's all the questions we have time for today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, for submitting all of these questions, keeping me on my toes, uh, entertaining me, making me think outside the box. I love it. So keep those questions coming in and wait for the next pup date. And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and anywhere else you can find us.